and here is the first one. This is a position from my game. I played with white. And right now, this is a pretty common and standard position. So, the normal move for black would be to play c6, probably protecting the d5 pawn, because currently it has been attacked. And in order to protect the pawn, black probably needs to play c6, and after that, we'll have an approximately equal position. Maybe white will play bishop f4 and get slightly better middle game position. But in the real game, it did not happen. And instead of that, the black player played a different move. So let's come back to the actual game. And here black played f4. And although I see that some students have already seen this game, in any case it will be useful to analyze it once again, because we will analyze it from the standpoint of defense. Okay, so black just played a 4, and this is a little bit tricky idea, because black is going to start that attack against white's king side. So the question is how to deal with such gambit ideas and with such aggressive players. Well, obviously, right now white needs to capture the pawn. It was left unprotected, so why not to capture it? And after that, black obviously should play king to h8. And now this is a question to you. So. We can see the position where black sacrificed the pawn for getting initiative position and possibly to start an attack against white's king side. Potentially, black can play f3, trying to break through there and destroy the white's castle, or maybe bring more pieces to the king side with queen to h4, or maybe play bishop c6, bringing another piece into play. So black has a couple of things to do. And now this is a question for you. How do you think? How should white play here? So please, in the chat area, let me know your opinion about that. How would you play here as white? And after that, we will start analyzing your ideas. The right couple of suggestions and Basically, the two most popular suggestions are either queen h5 or maybe f3. Okay, let's let's give it a try. So queen h5 is a tempting move, that's for sure. So let's go into that line. After that, obviously white is attacking black's h7 pawn, and black needs to do something about that. He will play g6, and then the queen needs to go somewhere probably it's more logical to go to h6, because otherwise white could play queen f3 straight away. And if white plays queen h6, then I agree with you that here there is no direct way for black to continue his attack. But at the same time, you can see that the queen is somewhat offside. It's not that easy for white to bring it back into play. And in some variations, potentially, black even may try to capture that queen. Of course, it probably wouldn't happen, but anyway, potentially the queen even may be trapped after rook to f7 following with bishop to f8. So this line doesn't seem to be so perfect for white. Let's come back and try to find any alternatives. Okay, another suggestion was to play f3 in the starting position instead of queen h5. Okay, I understand your point. With this move f3, you are going to stop black from playing that move. Anyway, after that, black will probably continue his attack in a similar manner. He'll play like queen to h4 maybe, and then he's, at the moment, he's attacking the rook onto e1, and later he can bring more pieces into play with 
like let's say if white protects the rook with bishop d2 then black can bring more pieces into play with rook to f6 and then threatening rook to h6 and overall it looks like black's attack is keep going after that it will be not that easy for white to stop black's attack on the h file and that's why we may conclude that even though the f3 move seems to be very logical for white in reality it doesn't work that great okay let's come back to the initial position and now I will tell you the first rule of defense this is the rule which you need to remember very well because it's very important and it is applicable almost for any position when you need to find a proper defensive move. First of all, when you're facing the situation where you need to defend, first you need to clarify opponent's threat. This is the rule which you must keep in mind. It means that, first of all, you need to understand which dangerous threats your opponent can potentially execute. For example, at the moment, what if black tries to play f3? Is it dangerous for white or not? Let's try to imagine that situation. I will now play any move for white. I will, let's say, play a3 it's just to see what black is going to do. Of course, white shouldn't play such a silly move as a3. Anyway, we're just trying to understand the black's idea. So let's say it is black's to move and he plays f3. After that, well, first of all, white can play bishop g5, taking the queen, and there will be no way for black to avoid an exchange. But even if white plays simply g3, then you can see that there is no way for black to continue his attack. The only potential idea black might have in some variations is to bring his queen to h3 and then try to deliver the maid on g2 but there is no practical way for black to do so and even if black tries and succeed in this idea to maneuver the queen to along the, some diagonals to the h3 square in the end it's enough for white to play bishop to f1 and he will cover the king side completely so there is no danger for white at all this means that the move f3 is totally undangerous for white and there is no reason for white to worry about that so let's come back to the main line and we already may conclude that there is no need for white to play f3 by himself because the f3 is not the actual threat the other two moves that black has here the moves queen h4 or bishop c6 are much more dangerous because if we imagine the situation like that let's say again I'll make that move for white a3 move just to see what black is going to do after that black will let's say play queen to h4 and on the next move he's ready to play bishop c6 and then potentially black even may sacrifice that bishop onto g2 following with f3 check and it's gonna be really really dangerous for white that's why we may conclude that actually the real threat from black side is to play bishop c6 and now we can come back to the main position to the starting position of this variation and we may conclude that actually the only thing white should worry about is how to prevent the move bishop c6 and as some students suggested the correct way for white is to capture that pawn onto b7 the point is that this move which seems to be greedy and it seems like white is just capturing the material but in reality this is a defensive move which neutralizes the main potential threat from the black side okay let's go next so black plate queen h4 now we already know that before you start thinking about your moves you need to clarify an opponent's threat this is the first rule of defense and here we can we already know that the only potential idea of f3 is not dangerous for white because white is going to reply with g3 and there will be nothing if you concluded that there are no actual threats from the side of your opponent then you may continue your own plan and that's why here white played bishop to d2 
Now black tried to continue his attack, so he played rook to b8, attacking the queen. Obviously the queen must go back, so queen to d5 was played. Okay, I see that some students asks why not queen to r3. Let's take a look. If white plays queen to r3, it's definitely possible. At the same time, here black can go bishop g4 and it will force the queen to go to another square anyway. Although I don't say that queen r3 is horribly bad, it doesn't change the situation dramatically, but nevertheless, if black wants, he can force black from, force white to remove the queen from that square anyway. Yeah, the one student says that the queen is not a good blocker, and that is true. So white played queen d5 to keep the queen in the game, and black replied with rook to f6. After that, there is the new situation where we need to think what white should do now. Okay, first let's try to realize what black is going to do. If I play anything for white sides, let's say I'll play the move like c4, uh, the move which is quite logical and aggressive, white is going to play c5. Uh, in that variation, black will probably continue with rook h6, which was an intention of his previous move, and white is forced to play h3, this is the only move, then ideally black would prefer either to sacrifice his bishop onto h3 straight away or maybe to support the sacrifice with some preparation moves first. Um, let's say black may try to like play rook to f8 and then he will create a new potential threat of f3 which may be realized instantly or after uh, the black's capture onto the h3 and now we can notice that all of the black pieces are taking part into his assault on the king side. And this is really, really dangerous. Some student asks what if black goes with his rook to b6. So let's take a step back and have a look at that position. If black goes with his rook onto, c onto b6, then I guess your idea is to prepare the move bishop c6. Then it's my question to you, how do you think, what's going to happen if black really plays bishop c6 on the next move? Yeah, that's right, a lot of students have noted that actually the move rook b6 weakens the last rank and white can take advantage of it straight away with the move queen to a8 and this is made. And even if bishop c6 would be possible, then white can capture that bishop and then deliver a mate with his rook after the move rook to b6. That's why the move rook b6 is logical for black, but it's impossible in this particular situation. Okay, let's come back. Anyway, we have seen that if white allows black to execute such a strong pressure on the king side, it may be really, really dangerous for him. So let's make a step backward and think what white can do in order to prevent this from happening. So we're going back to the position where black just played rook to f6. And now the question is what should white do? Here I'm going to tell you the second most important rule of defense and you need to think about it very very carefully and remember it very well. Here is the rule. You need to detect opponent's pieces on your half of the board and neutralize them. While talking about your half of the board, of course, I'm talking about that area. Let me try to draw this line. It's not very accurate, but it demonstrates what I'm talking about. I'm trying to highlight the white position. So you need to spot opponent's forces onto this territory. And after that, you can think to yourself, what should you do in order to remove those pieces from your area? Now this is a question for you. 
we can see two black species on the white territory. This is the black queen on the h4, this is one piece, and secondly, this is black's pawn onto f4. But of course, first of all, we should take care of the opponent's uh, pieces because they are much more powerful and much more dangerous for you. What can white do in order to push away the black species from his territory? That's right, most of the students suggested the move g3, which is definitely correct. This is what was played in the actual game, move g3. Okay, in the game black played queen to h3. If black takes the pawn, it doesn't change the situation dramatically. After that, white can recapture either by the h-pawn or by the f-pawn, both ways are possible. Maybe in the current position, white may take with the f-pawn because after that, potentially white can use the f-file in order to trade the rooks there. We still may remember that white has the extra pawn and this is good for white to trade the pieces. Now let's try to continue the line. Let's say black plays queen to h3. And now this is my question to you once again. How would you play here as white? Okay, basically three moves were suggested. Bishop f1, queen g2, or rook to f1. First of all, it's very good that you suggested the moves bishop f1 or queen to g2, because indeed the main point of this position is still to neutralize that black queen on the h3. This is the piece which is invaded into white's territory and it's really, really dangerous. We need to do something about that. That's why I think that the move queen g2 is really the best. If we imagine that white ignores this rule and play something like rook to f1, then really the situation can be horrible for white. After that, black can execute a sudden sacrifice, bishop takes g3, and then after pawn takes, it's not that black captures the pawn with his queen. This is not dangerous. White will simply play queen g2, covering his king, and there is nothing. But black has the move bishop c6, and this is a deadly idea. After that, white will lose his queen because it can't go away. Black is ready to deliver mate after queen g2 or queen g3 or even queen h1. You just can see that if you ignore the rules of defense, the consequences will be horrible. That's why it is so important to keep the defensive ideas in mind and to follow them. Okay, let's take a step back. So instead of playing rook to f1, as we discussed before, it would have been better to get rid of black's queen. White should play queen g2, neutralizing the black's queen to h3, which invaded into white's territory. And this would be the proper decision. After that, the white's position is secure, there is nothing black can do really, and white will then continue either to push his pawns in the center with, let's say, c4, c5, or playing rook f1, and things are good for white. Um, actually, I'm not saying that this variation is the only possible solution for white. There can be a few possible moves. The main point is that you keep in mind the key idea, that you need to remove opponent's pieces from your half of the board. That's the main idea. There can be a few moves which follow this rule and which provides the same plan for white. Anyway, let's come back to the actual game. In the actual game, white played g3 and instead of taking that pawn, black moved his queen to h3. Now, we have already discussed a similar situation, so it makes no sense to discuss it again. Once again, there is the, that intruder into the white's territory and White needs to do something about that. White needs to either exchange it or push it back. And that's why we should play either bishop f1 or queen to g2. I completely agree with you. Both ways are possible. In the actual game, white played queen to g2. 
Of course, Black is not willing to trade off the queens, his material down, so he went back with queen to h5. Now there is another question for you, and still you need to figure out what to do. You already know two main defensive rules. The first rule, you should clarify the opponent's threat. Ask yourself the question, what would Black do if it would be his turn right now? Which attacking moves he can play, and whether it would be really dangerous for you or not? It's important to highlight the fact that we need to pay attention only to the really dangerous moves, not just any attacking move that he may have. For example, Black has the move bishop to h3, but okay, it doesn't make a big difference. White can play queen to e4, and it doesn't really help Black to execute his attack. The other idea which Black has, the move f3, would be much more unpleasant for White, because after that, the White's queen is very limited on its position. If it goes to h1 in the corner, then it's really misplaced, completely out of game. If it White goes queen to f1, then it may be even trapped, surprisingly, with the move bishop h3 on the next move. And therefore, we may conclude that the only real threat that which Black has here is the move f3. So now we have spotted the actual threat. The only actual threat that Black has is to advance his pawn to f3 and attack white. Okay, after you have realized the opponent's threat, you may start thinking about the ways to neutralize it. And also, you may keep in mind the second rule, which states that if there is an opponent's piece on your half of the board, you should make your best to get rid of it. You can either exchange it or force it to go away. If White tries to play f3 by himself, this might be a possible idea in, under other circumstances, but here Black just can capture the pawn and on the next move he will be capturing another pawn on the f3. Well, this variation just doesn't work for White. So let's go back. Uh, some students suggest the move bishop e2 for white. Again, generally speaking, this is a good idea, but in that case, black will still play f3 because this advancement is supported by black's queen and rook, and therefore it is still possible. Yeah, that's right. Now I see that most of the students suggest to capture the pawn on f4, and this is very good. Actually, both ways are good. White can either take with a bishop or with a pawn, and both ways are good. Again, you just need to keep in mind the main idea. So, in the game, White took with a pawn, and also it puts a little trap for Black. If Black now inaccurately recaptures the pawn with the move bishop f4, then instead of taking the bishop now, White has a much better option. Can you see it? That's right, I see that you pointed it out correctly. White is going to play rook e7 instead. And after that, white will be attacking both the g7 square and the bishop onto d7, while the black's bishop onto f4 is still hanging, and all in all, this is really, really bad. Black can't play rook g6 uh, attacking the white's queen because this square is controlled by the white's bishop. And therefore, black will currently be in a serious trouble. Well, I'm not saying that White is winning, Black can keep his position, but White is still a pawn up, and if White can push the Black pieces back and exchange them, he will end up with an extra pawn in an endgame, and it will probably be winning for White. Therefore, Black does not want to go the position like that. Oh, that's right, actually one student says that after GX4, White already like, yeah, has a couple of extra pawns. That, that is correct. That's why bishop f4 is actually impossible for black, and in the actual game, instead of that, he played the move bishop to g4. He's probably going to play bishop f3, or maybe something else. 
OK, let's again recollect the main rule of defense. We need to ask ourselves what is the opponent's attacking idea and whether or this is dangerous or not. This is the key moment. You're not just trying to detect the opponent's aggressive moves. There are a lot of them. But you need to focus only on the moves that are really dangerous for you. That's the key. Because if opponent's attacking move doesn't really make any damage for you, then there is no reason for you to defend against it. Now let's just try to think about that. Let's say it is Black's turn right now. And let's say he played the move Bishop F3. So I would play any random move for White again. I would play that move A3. Of course it was not played in the game. I played just to see what Black is going to do. And let's say Black plays that move Bishop to F3. After that, as you can see, White can simply move his Queen either to G5 or to G3 and there is nothing. Actually, it even helps White because after Queen to G5, White will initiate an exchange of the Queens. So it, it rather helps White. With that in mind, we may conclude that the move Bishop F3 is not a threat. And if this is not a threat, there is no reason for White to take any defensive actions against it. Let's come back to the game and now we're coming to the next idea. If you detected that opponent's threat is not dangerous for you, you can and should realize your own plans. And that's why White played Rook A to B1. And here we came to another very important rule of defense. This is the first, the third rule which I'm going to share with you. This is the rule which states that offense is the best defense. I'm pretty sure that you have heard it many times already. But today we will find out why it is so. This is the key. As you can see, when your opponent is trying to attack you, he is advancing his pieces forward. And at the same time, simultaneously, he is weakening the bank ranks. So if you look at the black's pieces now, I will now draw the line. Again, I'm sorry it's not very accurate. But you can see that black's pieces are all very advanced. And they are not covering the black's backward ranks. On the last two ranks of black, black has only the rook onto b8. And that's it. This means that white has very good chances for a counter-attack. That's the point of that rule that offense is the best defense. OK, now I will remove my drawing and we'll continue the game. Black certainly doesn't want to trade off his rook because after that his bank rank will be completely unprotected. That's why he played rook to f8. However, right now white can once again keep attacking black's position. And by the way, let me highlight once again the fact that even though it seems like Black's attack is very dangerous, in reality there is nothing too dangerous for White because still Bishop F3 is not dangerous for White and if Black takes onto F4, okay, it will attack the F2 square but ultimately the Black's bank rank weakness will remain to be the problem. So Black cannot really remove his rooks from the back rank. And White can play rook B5, that is correct, and once again we are attacking our opponent. Offense is the best defense, this is really true and you always need to keep this in mind. Because your opponent will keep attacking you, he will keep doing this until you force him to stop, until you force him to start defending instead. That's the point of the move rook to b5. Now black needs to move his queen somewhere and at the same time he needs to keep control over his bishop onto g4 and it's not easy for black to do so. If black plays queen to h4, white can re reply with uh, queen to g3 or rook to g5 and it's going to be bad for black. That's why black tried it this desperate move c5, trying to close the line in this manner. Of course white can just capture the pawn. It's going to be one more extra pawn for white. Now already white has a lot. Black took that pawn on the f4, 
there was an exchange on the F4 and we ended up with this position. Okay, now I'm going to ask you the same question once again. What would you do here if you are plain white? I see that most of the students suggest the move C6. Indeed, this is a very good idea. I agree with you. It would attack the black's queen, would probably force him to go back, so C6 is one very good option. But before we come to the white's ideas, let's just try to realize what black is going to do. And if black has any threats, actually. For example, here's the question. Is black really threatening to take rook to f2? Remember, we're not just trying to find aggressive moves. We need to figure out whether it works for your opponent or not, whether it is dangerous for you or not. And in our example, the, the move rook takes f2, which seems to be dangerous at first glance, upon closer examination, turned out to be not a problem at all, because in the end, White will deliver mate on the last rank with rook to b8. So if, if black tries to take, rook takes f2, white will recapture with a queen, and then will deliver a mate with the move rook to b8. That's why actually there is no way for black to take on f2, and this is not a threat. So this is first useful conclusion which we made. After that we can continue thinking about other potential threats black may have. The other threat is a move bishop to f3. And that is really the black's idea. He's going to play a bishop f3, attacking the queen. White will probably play something like queen to g3. And then black will play rook to g4, attacking the white's queen and bishop, uh, sorry, king and queen simultaneously. This is the only real threat which black has. And now, when you know the opponent's threat, you can take some measures to get rid of it. Again, I'm not saying that there is the, a certain best move here for white. There are a couple of ideas. So one of them is to play c6, that's right, and start the counterattack. Another idea, which was executed in, in the game, is to play a rook to b4. Because it takes control over the fourth rank, and it prevents black from playing bishop f3 and then rook to g4. In addition to that, it helps white to trade off the pieces. When you are a defender and when you are a heading material, it is always a good idea to trade off the pieces. You will lead the game towards the end game where you will win easily with your extra material. In the game, black played bishop to f3. Now there was one quite a funny idea that could happen in the game, but didn't happen in the actual game. Initially, it seems like white should take the rook onto f4, and it's really, really tempting to, to, to make that move. So rook takes f4. White is attacking the black's rook on, on the f8, and then black obviously needs to recapture, so he will take with, with his move, rook takes f4, and here white will finally detect that the e8 square is under the control of the black's queen. Therefore, there is no way for white to play rook to e8. And then, white will find out himself in a serious trouble. The white's queen cannot go away because black is ready to play rook to g4. And then it seems like white should just resign, but in reality, white has a fantastical move, bishop to e2 creating a counter pin on the black's queen. Now if black takes the queen onto g2, white will do the same with the move bishop takes h5. This is a really funny idea and computer in this suggestion, in this position, suggests another fantastical move. Computer says that black must play queen to e8, installing one more pin, this time on the white's rook. And this creates a totally crazy position and it's quite funny that almost all the pieces are pinned in one or another way. Okay, it's just a funny position. Of course, white doesn't have to 
go into that line and it really didn't happen in the actual game. So let's come back to the actual game situation. After black played bishop to f3, white played queen to g3. This is certainly much easier way for white. And then the black's attack is almost stopped because basically there is nothing he can do. In the game he played g5, just protecting the rook, but as you can see, black has no threats at all. Well, the fourth rank is controlled by the white's rook, and therefore there is nothing black can do. White just played rook to e7, and in a few moves black resigned. Currently white is threatening rook takes h7, the black's rook cannot move from the f4 square because white will play queen to e5 check, and then queen to g7 mate, and it's totally hopeless, so in a few moves black resigned. This webinar will be recorded, by the way, and below the video you will find the link to all the games shown in this webinar, so if you want to see the whole game you can, do, you can do it later on. We'll not spend time on that now. Anyway, right now let's draw the conclusions from this game. We have discussed the three main rules of defense. The first rule, you need to clarify opponent's threat. Before you can find the proper defensive move, you need to realize what are the dangerous ideas you, that your opponent has. Only after that, you may decide how to counteract them properly. This was the first very important rule. The second very important rule is to neutralize opponent's pieces on your half of the board. If you do so, there will be no attacking potential in the position of your opponent, and there will be nothing he can do. And the third rule is that offense is the best defense. While trying to attack, your opponent moves his pieces forward and simultaneously he's weakening his back ranks. Okay, these are three most important, most fundamental rules of defense. Now let's take a look at some other examples and we will see how the same rules were realized in other situations.